Income tax 2021-2022 software example, Schedule C impact on tax return using tax software. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lucert Tax Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We got the 100,000 W-2 income to start with, 12,550 standard deduction, getting us down to the 87,450 at the taxable income, mirroring that in our income tax equation, 100,000, 12,550, and the 87. 87,450. If we go back to the tax software and look at page numero dos, number two, that is 1515 tax calculated. And we're going to mirror that on our tax software as well with the 1515. Back to page one, we're now going to make an adjustment and move to a Schedule C type business and try to mirror the same kind of income level to see all the different impacts will, that will happen just by adding the Schedule C type of business. And if you're a tax preparer or if you're doing your own taxes, but if you're a tax preparer in particular, you want to be thinking about what kind of returns you're going to be focusing in on. Because if you're thinking about doing business returns, it's quite likely you're going to spend a lot more time doing possible some accounting type of work because a lot of small businesses in particular might not have the perfect set of books and they might need help with that and you're also going to have to do more research and some more data input into the system and be able to visualize and understand more things that are going on within the tax return and most likely be able to make projections into the future so that you can calculate estimated tax and have tax questions as people go through the growing pains of their business, hopefully their business growing, and the tax implications that will be involved uh, with that. Or are we going for a smaller uh, a, a type of business where we're not trying to do as complex of a business tax returns, for example, and possibly wanting to focus on tax returns where we can automate the system. There's some softwares out there that, that basically you can use tools to kind of try to do the data input from a scanned documents of all the W-2s and 1099s and whatnot. And to do that, you need, you need tax returns that kind of fit into a state, a state mold, uh, which, which basically the Schedule C often will break that mold. In other words, if you're just going to use the data input forms to populate the tax return and want to automate it as fast as possible and be as efficient as possible to try to do as many returns as you can in like an automated fashion, then you want returns that are basically going to fit into uh, a, a standard mold. And that means that the complexity of returns, usually at the higher income level and or complexities like business returns can make things more complicated. So just keep that uh, those kind of things in mind as well. So let's just change this from the wages here at the 100,000 and let's put that 100,000 into a Schedule C and just look at the different components that go are going to be impacted. So this is what we have at the 100,000 W-2 income tax calculated and that's basically what we have thus far. Let's go back into our data input now and say, okay, let's go to the wages and say wages are at zero deleting the rate wages and then let's go into our schedule C and so I'm going to say it's, I'm just going to say it's a restaurant here for the schedule C data input and we're going to say it's an it's an accounting method of a cash method this is something you would have to determine are they on a cash or accrual method if you have inventory involved then you might be required to have like an accrual method at some point in time so that can complicate things might want to talk to your accountant about that in terms of your accounting method and then I'm just going to go down to the income level. I'm going to put the 100,000. Let's put 120,000 in income. And that's going to be, this is basically just simply an income statement now. And then we're going to have the expenses, which I'm going to put 20,000 in the expenses. If I jump back on over to the forms now, on page one of the form 1040, you would see what you would expect, the net flowing through, because that 20,000 that I put in, I believe, advertising, expenses is now something that was consumed in order to generate revenue and so the net is what's pulling over to uh, page one of the form 1040 let's follow the flow and see what happens we got the new form which is the schedule c this is what most people will think of when you've got the schedule when you've got a business like a sole proprietorship also note that businesses could be set up in other ways when you're talking about business returns and you're going to get questions with regards to the business entity and the type of entity and there's going to be 
oftentimes you're, you're going to be dealing with other companies that specialize in setting up certain types of entities like an S corporation or LLC. And, and they have incentives to want to set people up in those in those areas. So you got and you got to be able to say well, these are the pros and cons of those kind of entities as well if you start to pick up these types of, of business returns. But the Schedule C is the sole proprietorship uh, that we would be that we would be picking up. It would be the easiest thing to do if you're if you're a business to start out with. And I won't get into the pros and cons of other entities at this point. But we've got the 120,000 uh, on the income line up top. So first off, let's just run through this. We got the profit and loss. Adam Smith. We're going to say it's the restaurant. <clears throat> Social Security number. Enter uh, enter the code from the from the instructions. That's indicating the type of industry that we're in. And then you also might have an EIN number. And this is going to be important when you're a Schedule C business because uh, you might have to give your EIN number, which is an employee identification number, even if you don't have employees, to someone else. So they issue you a 1099. So we might talk about the EIN number in a in a little bit uh, a future presentation, but. Then we've got the method that we're going to use. We're going to say cash method at this point. And then down below, we've got the income line item at the 120000 And then we've got the expenses that are down below, which we just put the expense of the 20000 That gives us the net income of the 100000 Now, note that the business income mirrors what you would expect from an income tax system uh, most closely. In other words, it doesn't make sense if you have your own business for the government to tax you on 120,000 the gross proceeds if you had to spend 20,000 in order to make the 120,000 because if you were to do that it would it would kind of really wipe out some businesses that have higher expenses in order to generate the revenue so what it makes sense to do is say well we're, we're going to tax you on the net income down here at the 100,000 that means that all these expenses that we're recording on the Schedule C are really deductions. You can call these expenses deductions. It's an income statement on the tax return. Everything's flipped backwards, meaning income is bad for taxes and expenses are good for taxes, which is backwards to what it is in like real life. And so, but just realize that all these are, you're taking these expenses and you're pulling in the 100,000, the net ultimately to page one of the 1040 which is a little bit deceiving because this 100,000 now is in the income line, but it's already been net against a bunch of expenses because the whole income statement had already been uh, taken into consideration, which had income and the expenses, the expenses in essence being business deductions. So that's going to be the general. Now we can get into a lot of into the weeds on what's deductible over here. And we'll talk more about that. But just to get a general idea here, we see that this net income flows through to page one of the form, uh, I'm sorry, schedule one. So we got schedule one, There, there's the 100,000. It's coming from the schedule C. This totals up to the 100,000 down below. That then pulls into the form 1040. So now we're gonna go into the 1040, the 100,000. Now, if that was all that happened, you say, ah, you know, that's not too bad. I can, I can deal with that. But we also have some other activity. One of the big ones, well, we can see down here that we have the, the, uh, the added item of the qualified uh, business income deduction. So that's a huge one. It was a, it's a fairly newer kind of thing that happened a couple of years ago as they did the, the changes to the law and stuff. So, so that's kind of a confusing one. We might touch in on that one because it's a big item. And then the other one is if I go on to page two, we now see that we have the tax calculated, but we also have this other thing down here, which is the other taxes, including self-employment tax. And like, wait a second, that's usually what shocks a lot of people. And if you're talking to clients, that's gonna be something that you're gonna have to explain to people because if there have been W-2 employees, they don't understand you know, self-employment tax and how it kind of ties into the the payroll taxes if you were an employee so then you got to basically explain this and this is the thing one big thing that often makes people get behind on their tax payments and even if a business is profitable if they get behind on their tax payments it will discourage <laughs> their, their growth process right so and so you got to you want to make sure that you have that kind of in mind and so that's calculated over here on this schedule se 
So we've got the Schedule SE, which is the self-employment tax, Schedule SE. So this, in essence, if you were to explain this, we'll dive into this in more detail later, but if you were to explain this to a client or try to think through it yourself so you can explain it to a client, you're basically saying, hey, look, the IRS wants to make the sole proprietorship kind of mirror the same kind of activity that's happening in like a normal corporation between the employee and the employer. And they're basically treating you as the self-employed person on the Schedule C as if you are the employee and the employer. In other words, the wages or the net income that you get at the bottom is kind of similar. They're going to treat it kind of similar or in a similar way as payroll taxes being treated. And they're treating you as an employee of your own business and the employer of your own business with regards to payroll taxes. What that means is on the Schedule C side of things, or, or I'm sorry, on the C corporation side of things, uh, usually what happens with payroll taxes is the employee pays payroll taxes, Social Security and Medicare is what we're mainly talking about here, and then the employer matches the payroll taxes. So you have two sides paying payroll taxes, kind of like a 401k plan. That's They kind of sold it that way when they put it into the system. It's kind of like a 401k plan or something like that, but it's only really with the payments they're kind of mirroring that structure. And so they're basically saying, okay, you, you've got net income down here. We're gonna kind of pretend or act like with regards to payroll taxes or self-employment taxes, like that's kind of like wages to you and you're the employer. So we're gonna charge you the employer and the employee payroll taxes, but we're not gonna call them payroll taxes. We're gonna call them self-employment tax. So that's that's basically what self-employment tax is. It's kind of the payroll taxes that they're putting on to the, to, to the self-employment income on the Schedule C. You're paying both the employer and employee portion in essence. So we might dive down into this in a little bit more detail later, but in essence, you got the 14, 129 that's what's feeding over to the 1040 page number two 1040 1040 page number two right here and that's a significant as you can see that's that could be quite significant right that could be something that and that's shocking to people because again they're, they're usually thinking of just calculating the income tax with regards to the tax return if they're not used to the self-employment thing and they're just a w-2 employee because if they're a W-2 employee, they already paid their payroll taxes because they got pulled out of their pay by the employer, so they don't really think about it. And when you do your, your income taxes, you're not really thinking about the payroll taxes. So that's something to keep aware of. Now, the another thing, if I go back on over here, and this has to do, again, with the relationship between a, a normal corporation and then a sole proprietorship. So you're like, okay, so now you're treating me with my net income as if I'm my own employee and the employer paying the employee and employer portion of payroll taxes. But wait a second, because if I was a normal corporation, I would get to deduct at least a half of the taxes that were that were the employer taxes. So why should if you're trying to match what I'm doing here on the Schedule C to a corporation, I should get to deduct at least half of the payroll taxes because that's kind of how it works in a corporation. Okay, so they're like, okay, we got to do that, but we can't put it in here in the expenses as the payroll tax deduction for the self-employment half deductible, because then you'd end up with a circle reference because that would lower the 100,000. So they then take half of these taxes, as you can see here, and they charge you the, the full amount of the taxes that we saw on page two of the form 1040, but then they take half of it and they give you a deduction for income tax purposes, not for payroll tax purposes, but for income tax purposes. So we get a deduction. So we're going to say, okay, where are, the, where are you going to put that then? Well, that's going to be then on page two of the schedule one. So it's page two of the schedule one. We've got uh, the, the, the deduction for part of the self-employment tax, which comes from here. And then that totals up to all your adjustments. That's an above the line deduction and it flows into the 1040. So now we've got the 100,000 here. We get to deduct half of the payroll taxes, not for self-employment tax purposes, but for income tax purposes. And then we get to this item here. And then they also have, and this was a, the, another, they gave some benefits to, you know, the tax rates and so on for business entities and whatnot. And then to try to, to try to match things up, 
uh, they, they had to include this qualified business income deduction, which again, it's kind of like a plug in the tax code, like to try to try to reconcile some things that they were trying to do, which I think were actually good things. But this is kind of an ugly kind of plug thing that they put in there to kind of try to fix everything. So now you now you've got this thing. This is a fairly new qualified business income deduction and you can see the calculation here on it which is quite significant and we'll dive basically into that again as well but there's some couple caveats in terms of you know you know, who, who qualifies in the count and the calculation of it could differ basically on the industry a bit so we might dive into that a bit in future presentations as well so those are those are some of the things that basically are, are impacted so you can see that there's just a lot of things that are impacted just from a not even just from a bookkeeping standpoint. In other words, you can also think about diving into the Schedule C and say, well, does this, did they actually get the bookkeeping right? <laughs> Where did I get this? Their Schedule C business and, and this, or, or did they get this from their software and so on and so forth? And you also have then projections out into the future for things like estimated tax payments that they're going to have to make because they're not going to have withholdings that are coming out from their wages from the, from the, employer that they're going to have to think about and then they could also think about whether something is deductible or not on the expenses side of things what about things like the home if you have a home office what's the deductibility of that what about a car if you use the car for work those kind of things get complicated in terms of the deductibility of them same with things like should i have a retirement plan and so on and then of course if you add employees into the role then you've got to deal with the employees that's kind of a bookkeeping side of things but you're also going to have to deal with it when you have the when you have the tax when you have the expenses that you're going to have to record if they have employees and then they have the expenses of the payroll that they're running as well so it adds a significant even a basic schedule c adds a significant amount of complexity to the tax return even without considering bookkeeping projections and, and that kind of stuff going forward so just it's something to be aware of now if i was to mirror this on my tax return over here, I'd say I'd say okay, we got the hundred thousand is gone. Let's let's go to the Schedule C, and I might mirror the the actual calculation here, but I might not always do that for the whole. I might not put a whole income statement here. In other words, if I'm going to do the bookkeeping and help them with adjusting entries, I'll do a whole other worksheet with it, which will be adjusting entry worksheet to help them out with that. Otherwise, I'm going to depend on their numbers maybe. And then I'll get to the 100,000. There's the 100,000 that pulls over to the page one of the of the tax formula. So that looks good. And then we're going to have to get into the fact that they have the self-employment tax. So I'm going to go back on over to the the adjustments and we could get into the calculation of the self-employment tax, but I'm going to depend on the software for now to do it. But it's a fairly straightforward. It's more of a flat tax, in other words, so if you wanted to actually recalculate it, it would be a lot easier to do than the actual federal income tax. But I won't do it right now. We're going to say we're going to depend on the tax return. They came up to 14,129. So I'm going to say, OK, that was 14,141. This is, wait a sec, hold that. That's the deductible part. This is going to be the additional taxes for self-employment tax. Additional taxes. Alternative self-employment. OK, 14. Now I forgot the number, 14129, 129. So that pulls over to the first page of our formula down here where we had the tax calculated and then the 14129. This tax I'll plug in later. So we've got that. Then we've got the deductible part of it, which is going to be on the adjustments to income, which I could do with a formula. I could say this equals the additional taxes for the self-employment tax, that divided by two, because half of it's gonna be an above the line deduction. That then pulls into the first page of our formula here. So now we've got the 100,000, we got the 7,065 that we get to deduct half of the self-employment tax. That brings us to the 92,936. We got the standard deduction, no change there. Then we've got this business, this qualified business income deduction. Again, we might dive into this in a bit more detail in future presentations right now i'm going to let the software do the calculation for us which is going to be the 1677 so 161077 
And that brings us to the 64309. So we got the 64309, letting the software do the calculation for the federal income tax of the 9,900. So I'm going to say this is going to be the 9900. And then if I have that and the other taxes, which is the self-employment taxes, that brings us to total taxes of 2429. So when we got the 2429, we're not talking about anything on the payments. And just remember, the payments is a whole different problem than it is if you're a W-2 employee because you got nobody helping you out with the withholdings on it. You have to actually write a check or make an electronic payment is what they prefer to the government. If people do not do that because they're not used to doing that, which is very, very common, then they can easily get behind even if their business is doing good and get discouraged on, on their business. It's also quite common that people get 1099s for their income, but they don't actually file their tax returns and they don't then write off all their expenses. And if that happens, then the government's going to come back and say, I see your income of 120000 I don't see any expenses because you didn't file a Schedule C. They're going to charge you taxes on the gross income. And that's where people get really, really backed up on, <clears throat> on the taxes because now they, they're getting charged on the gross income when they should only be getting charged on the net income. And if they don't file the taxes, then, then they can get quite behind in that, uh, in that scenario as well. So especially if you're talking to new people that are, that are starting the Schedule C type of business, uh, you, you, to get off on the right foot, you, know, you wanna make sure that they understand the, social, the, the self-employment tax and the fact that they have to actually make the payments during the year and that they have to do the books, especially if they're, you know, if they're getting a 1099, they got to do their taxes because if they don't, they're not going to write off their expenses and the IRS is going to charge them on, on gross income, which is, you know, that's devastating to the business. So those are just a, a quick recap of the things that we'll, we want to keep in mind. We'll dive into more of them in more detail as we go.